So hi again, what I will do, I will do solving for the variable. So equations that only have variables in them. So it's, it's using algebra, but with no numbers, you have some variables in the equation. You have to solve for one specific variable. It's very useful for physics and chemistry. Uh, so watch this. So basically solve for the variable indicated. That's an, there's an A right there, indicated. Okay, so um, we'll start off with uh, maybe an easy one. So the first one we're gonna do is V equals LW H. And they want you to solve this for H. This is very simple. Um, if you wanna solve this for H, all you need to do, just take this and divide both sides by LW. The L's will cancel, so W will cancel, and then you'll end up with H equals B over L. W, so just basic algebra. Um, the second one they have V equals one third, so the volume equals one third pi r squared H, and they want you to solve this for H. So to solve for H, you know, there's a little thing to get rid, of, you see how everything here is multiplied and you wanna get rid of the one third, you could divide both sides by one third. That's maybe what some teachers will tell you, or you could multiply the whole equation by one by three. What I say to my students, just cross that three, multiply it into the V. So the three from the bottom, when it crosses the equal signs, it goes to the top where the V is because V is over one. So we consider the V to be on top. So this will give me three V equals pi R squared H. Now you wanna isolate the H, you divide both sides by pi r squared pi r squared and that will cancel that will cancel and we'll have h isolated and it will equal 3v over pi r squared okay so we'll try a few more make them a little bit harder and more challenging see here we have a few questions that are more challenging so here they want me to solve for a so if you wanna solve for A, the first thing you wanna do, you wanna move the UT to this side and then you'll have S minus UT because this are added or subtracted, this has a plus in front of it. So when you move it to the other side, it just becomes minus UT equals negative one half A T squared. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm, see this two here? I'll show you something, okay, cross multiply. Let's say the half here, you cannot cross multiply the two into the S because you have UT minus all of this. But now since you have one term here, we call this one term, then you could cross multiply the two right there. So you'll have two S minus UT. So that two crosses from the bottom goes to the top because as I said, this is over one equals negative A T squared. To solve for A now, just divide both sides by negative T squared. And again, there's lots of ways to, um, to, to do this by the ways, but this is the, the way I, I'll do it. Negative over t squared. So the negative cancels the negative, the t squared cancels the t squared. Now we have this, usually you don't like a negative on the bottom. So I'm just gonna throw the negative right in front of the two there. So we have negative two S minus UT over t squared. And that's what A equals. Okay, so A equals all of that. Also, you could express it if you want as uh, negative 2S plus 2UT over T squared. And that's also an answer that you could express it at. So if this is a multiple choice, they could write it like this, they could write it like that. They could also write it as two UT minus two S over T squared. So they just flip it around. Yeah, how about this one here? 
This one looks pretty ugly, isn't it? Um, not so if you follow what I'm trying, I will show you here. So the first thing you wanna keep the one F, and sorry, by the way, it's here you're solving for F. F is on the bottom, what do we do? So what do you do is you do a common denominator here. So you multiply the Q there and the P there. Okay. Now some students will ask me, why, why do I have to do a common denominator? Because if you don't, this is rigid. This part right here is rigid. You cannot rotate it. But once you do this, you see now all of this here, you could just rotate it. Like top becomes bottom and bottom becomes top. So you'll have F equals PQ over Q minus P. And that's solved for F right there, it's done. So again, if you do this, if you go F equals, well, we're gonna rotate all of this and make it P minus Q like that, that's wrong, don't do that. Because this, as I said, this is rigid right here. Once you do a common denominator and it becomes one fraction, then you're allowed to rotate it and rotate the whole thing. You cannot just rotate this. So you rotate the whole thing in the brackets here and that's allow, allowed. And therefore this, this way you'll have F on top of one, which is F equals that. And that's answered right there. I will do one more. Um, okay, maybe two more. So there we go, two questions. I'm gonna do the one on the right uh, first. They want you to solve it for B. C, honestly, like if, if you listen to this, cross multiplying becomes so easy for you and it's, it saves you from a lot of, it, it, actually it will move things a lot smoother for you and in a very fast way. So here, if you look at this here, it's one term, okay? Like you look at this as one term, this is multiplied into this. The two and the H, you could cross multiply them right away. And as I said in my earlier lessons, when you cross multiply the equal sign, when you cross the equal sign, if you're on the bottom, you go to the top. If you're on the top, you go to the bottom. Even though you don't see a one under the A, but the bottom that's under the A is one. So I'm gonna cross the two to where the A is. Okay, and I'm gonna cross the H to where the one is imaginary one. So we have two A over H equals A plus B. So to solve for A, you gotta move B to the other side. So it becomes two A over H minus B. When you move the other side, you change it to minus equals A. So you could leave it as this, or you could just do a common denominator if you like, either or. So if you're doing common denominator, e would, A would equal the common denominator is H, so 2A stays the same because it already has H on, top, on, the, on the bottom of it. And H divided by one is H times B is BH, so minus BH. And that's the answer for this. Now let's go to the um, other one right here. They want you to solve for E. So cross multiplying. I'm gonna cross multiply all of this into where the C is. So I have C equals NR minus R equals N E, divide both sides by N and that will cancel and therefore E equals C N R minus R over N. So as you see, what you think is looks really hard and all of that, if you master cross multiplication, it will be so easy for you. These are equations that you'll be using them in chemistry and physics. And sometimes you have to solve for a variable. Yes, you could put in all your numbers and then calculate and solve for the variable later. But some questions they'll ask you to specifically solve for the variable before, before you submit your numbers and cross multiply, cross multiply, cross multiply. Learn that it will, you will see how amazing this tool is and cross multiply doesn't mean everything has to cross and all the bottoms have to cross, not really. You cross what you need to cross to isolate the variable that you're interested in and that's all you need to cross. All right, here again, I keep on making this math easy for you. So don't forget to support, go ahead, please subscribe, 
hit that like button, comment if you want, but most importantly, share with others so they could benefit. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.